Okay, bit of a warning. It's me from the future, by the way. Um, but it's a bit of a long video. So if you do uh, need to skip ahead, that's fine. You can obviously on a phone, double click to the right and it will skip ahead 10 seconds. And if you, you need the video to be faster, there's also playback speed that you can adjust. Uh, it's at the top right hand corner, I believe for a phone. I do not remember for some reason. I'm pretty sure it's top right hand corner, the three dots, the settings. Um, and then you can adjust the playback speed all the way up to times to speed and on a computer It's at the bottom right hand corner and it's the um, settings button and it looks like a gear So that's pretty easy to tell that that is the uh, settings button um, But yeah, you can adjust it make it a bit faster 1.5 to you know adjust that a little bit and there you go uh, That should save you a lot of time if you don't want to watch the entire video all the way through the entire 40 minutes. But if you do need to watch entire four minutes, that's uh, also a great thing. I didn't want to redo the video because um, just in case if there's any information that you need, I want to make sure that you have it. I don't want um, to accidentally miss something that is important. So I'm sorry for the video being so long. I just want to make sure that you got all the information you needed. So I apologize, but I'm doing it to attempt to help you. Um, so anyway, uh, let's just continue on um, wherever this is going to continue on from. Uh, today we're going to be doing a video on the scoreboard command and sorry I haven't been posting for a while. This video has been, you, know, you all have probably been expecting it for a bit, unless you're a brand new viewer. In that case, don't forget to subscribe. I'll be doing some more content, maybe not too many command videos because command videos are very, very irritating. And also I'd like to give a shout out to Kalem Druger. I can't think, I, I don't know how to pronounce uh, your name, but thank you. Since some of the command block videos, you actually answered a lot of the com like command block questions that people were asking, and I greatly appreciate that. Let's actually get into this uh, video here about scoreboards. Now, first thing I need to explain is it's not necessarily a normal scoreboard video that you might expect. Uh, what I mean by that is I'm not going to tell you exactly what to do. I want you to understand how it works. It's not a block for block, line for line kind of tutorial. I want you to be able to understand the commands a lot better after this. So even if you already know how to use a scoreboard command, this video could help you understand it better and be able to use it in more situations. So that's sort of the point of this video. I want beginners to get, you know, introduced to the scoreboard command. Then also for those of you who are intermediate or maybe even advanced, um, it really depends on what you consider to be advanced. Um, this should be able to help you understand it better because I have a different point of view on the scoreboard command because I've been, um, I casually programmed or I've been casually programming really um, since I was like 10 years old so for about the, the past seven years because I'm 17 now. So obviously I have a bit of a different perspective on how these things, uh, how these things operate and work and hopefully I can help you have a new perspective on it, help you understand how it works so that you can use the scoreboard command more efficiently and effectively to come up with your own ideas using the command. So let's actually get into this. Sorry for the long intro. Let me actually show you um, the commands. I'm gonna go through um, one by one. Now, obviously, I'm not gonna show you how to set up an entire system, how to put it into a command, and you know all that kind of stuff. I'm I'm gonna be showing you a lot, but not everything because I can't I can't put everything in in one video because scoreboards. Are a bit interesting and we will see that pretty soon and that is because scoreboards is basically like making a bucket let me scoot up a little bit there we go and scoreboards like making a bucket so we can add a thing right here so we have add list remove and set display now i'm going to try giving you a visual that you can sort of think about so you can sort of imagine um adding a scoreboard as in sort of like making a bucket in a way and that sounds really dumb but let's say you could make like a chest. Let's just get a chest and you can say, oh, every player has a chest as their scoreboard. So every player has a scoreboard when you make one. So you make a scoreboard and every player that joins gets a chest where they put information in it. Now, in information is different than adding, you know, putting in oak planks into your into your chest. Right. You know, that's just saying you have oak planks. But for a scoreboard you can add in information into a player's I guess their their board that they just an invisible board that is added to the player you can't see it um, the only thing it's, it's displayed on is obviously you could add a, a set display 
but for every person that joins a world and even you can do this to entities as well you could add them to the scoreboard and it will obviously have basically a slot for them and you can put information in so you can the thing about that is that means that you can have this is like the first scoreboard and the thing about these scoreboards is you can't add you know a bunch of information to one scoreboard a one scoreboard because it's only counting numbers and only one set of numbers of what person has you can say okay now this right here is my chest right this is basically my scoreboard and we can say okay well I have one oak or I have two oak or three or four and obviously we can even have a second a second scoreboard for a second thing of like oak planks or we could you know use an entirely separate block and that sounds this sounds really dumb at first but hopefully this will start making sense when we once we make a scoreboard now now we can add you know a different block and we can add as many numbers as we now we have 12 iron blocks so basically with this you can name at in a scoreboard you can name these anything you want so it doesn't have to be oak you know it could be let's say um, I don't know rank server rank or something like that and they have rank four and then you know that this right here could be um, the iron block could be money so I have 12 money or something along those lines and that's sort of how it works every player just has a place to store information and you can use scoreboards to add and subtract and store information about you know about your game inside for every single player so it's basically like a moving chest in a way so it's just a way of storing information just like how you would store blocks in a chest and it sounds really dumb storing information right storing information how do you store information now you're probably thinking well <laughs> storing information yeah you just put something in a chest and you're storing the the items well you can also store things completely differently in a completely different way this is something that um, a lot of redstoners will probably understand this is how I got started with commands I got started with using um, redstone so let's say th this is this is our this is our scoreboard right here we're making a, a little mini scoreboard we could say we can add have a score is the player the owner yes or no redstone block is yes nothing is no you know there we go okay he's the the owner and we obviously would probably have a sign to mark these things but I'm just gonna tell you what they are so we don't have to have all these signs set up and then you know take forever so we can store it by saying that yes he is something or no he isn't something and that sounds that is really obvious that's exactly how bo that's what it's called boolean logic um, but we're not gonna really get into that let me set the time to noon I completely forgot to change the time of, I don't know what happened with the weather there we go let me turn off the weather cycle I guess this is like how to how to, how to turn off the weather tutorial here we go do weather cycle and then false and the daylight cycle should already be off anyway but whatever here we, here we go apparently now they're, now they're both off that works okay so with these kind of things it, it makes sense you know you can say they have something or they don't have something it's true or false or it can be one and zero one would be yes zero would be no so we can store information like that so simply and in fact this is also very similar to how it works and it saves it so we can put place down a block and it's saved it's saved yes they have whatever or no they don't have something and that's saving information that is literally saving information and many people don't realize that you could literally save information that easily either you have something or you don't have something so what that means for scoreboards now that well let's actually get into scoreboards that might be confusing now but hopefully once I get into the scoreboard you'll actually sort of see how that works how you can save information you know one and two three four five all the way up all these different numbers you can save multiple scoreboards and do that kind of stuff like what I showed with the chest saving different numbers and obviously if they don't have something that's something on its own and if they have something it's also a number now okay here we go so let me actually make a scoreboard so we have you know add scoreboard now we're just going to do um, I'm going to call it var for vari variable. Ah, nah. That sounds really complicated. And I'm just trying to show you guys, you know, that it's actually really simple. So let's just call it rank, you know, like a, a server rank or something like that. So now we have rank. So now we've added an objective called rank. Now the dummy, there's not, it's not really important. The only reason you add the dummy is just because it's just a way of like separating the two. Um, so I don't I think it's literally just like basically it's like a comma like it's just a way of separating the thing but I'm not entirely sure why that's there but that's not really important 
Now, the first part of this is rank, and then there's dummy, which doesn't really matter. It's just separating the next one and rank. Now, if we actually read this part over here, scoreboard objectives, add, an objective string, what that means is the objective string is basically what the computer reads it as. So what the computer sees whenever we are, or the command blocks will see, whenever you try calling or let's say summoning that objective, you know, summoning this um, scoreboard. So it's basically like a way for us to identify which scoreboard it is. Then dummy separates this next part, and this is the display name. This is what we will see whenever it's displayed over the player in the player you know bar, wherever it's displaying. This is what we will see. So we could call this something completely different. We could just call it a number one. We could do we could call this anything, but we're gonna see rank over here. Now one thing I'm I'm doing which. Um, should help you guys do if you start doing this will this will make your life a little bit easier and that is this is lowercase now that's just it's good habit because let's say if you accidentally uh, you know do a lot of scoreboard not accidentally if you do a lot of scoreboards you you might end up having uh, so many it's hard to remember whether or not it's capital or not capital and you have to check and if you have to check, that's wasted time and if you're doing a lot with scoreboards you don't want to check every single time whether or not you know, different scoreboards have capitals, don't have capitals. So just make sure that like, not make sure, but it's good habit. You don't have to, but it's a good habit to not have capitals in this. Just either have it, you know, lower, like just have it completely lowercase or use camel case or have it always uppercase. Just make sure whatever you do, always keep it consistent. Uh, it'll, it'll just save you time in the long run. Now, obviously you don't have to do that. You don't always have to do that. It's just a little bit of a time saver. But that's just sort of nitpicky, and that's something I learned whenever I was programming. That sometimes, you know, if you have to, if you have to use capitals or not have capitals, it's just, you know, be consistent so you know what to use, when to use it. Anyway, so we have uh, this right here, and I just need to make sure I specify that you know, objective string is what the computer sees, what you're going to call upon whenever you try uh, doing a command, and the display name is basically just how it's going to be seen um, for the player. They're they're different one we're going to be using now okay and one other one's just basically like a like a you know name tag or whatever anyway so we have let's go back to objectives now we can list all of our um, objectives our scoreboards so obviously this is right here as you can see rank displays as rank or capital r capital r rank and the type is dummy and there's not there's no other types so i don't really get why that's there. They might be adding more. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I don't know everything about scoreboards, but I'm pr pretty sure that there's not really anything else besides um, dummy. So um, here we go. So we also have um, remove, which is obvious. It just removes the scoreboard. And then now we're going to actually set the display. The set display, um, we could do below name, list, or sidebar. And I'm going to be using sidebar. It's just basically how they're going to be um, shown. So below name is actually below your player name. I don't have anyone else in this world, and I don't have like another account that I can really get on the world. I guess I have my Xbox. I have my Xbox, but um, that's just going to be a bit of a pain, um, and I didn't turn it on. I didn't think about this beforehand. Um, but yeah, it's just below the player name. So like when you look at a player standing in front of you, it's under their name. Then we have list, which is basically in the pause menu, and we have sidebar. And uh, most people prefer sidebar. And then see, as you can tell, this is lowercase rank. So that is how we're calling upon it, um, if that makes sense. And I may have to show you an example later, um, um, but they're they're a little bit different. Um, so then we have ascending and descending order, uh, which is basically like whether or not the biggest number will be shown at the top or the smallest number will be shown at the top. So here we go. Set the display of rank to be right there. Now it's showing up at the right over on the right and that is capital that is the display name so I believe we can change the display name so let's actually try that real quick um, oops here we go uh, display let's see let's try something completely different um, uh, I don't know what what we should call it let's just call it server for now Oh, it's already 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 exists we're gonna have to remove it and then do it again um, but let's actually show you the remove then remove rank and then there you go now we have to add there we go now we can just easily 
easily set the display. So here we go. If we set the display of rank to sidebar, now as you can see, it's showing up as server, even though they're completely different. Um, so that hopefully makes sense um, to you. This is the display name, and then rank right here is what we're calling upon. So that's what you know we're going to type in commands to actually um, change the numbers. Now in objectives, there's nothing else in there. Now the rest of it is in player. Now let's actually um, do this. Let's add uh, Mr. Jcraft one. Oops, I messed that up. Rank. We have to say which scoreboard we want to use. If there's multiple scoreboards, we need to make sure that we select the correct the correct one. And this is rank right here. And we're going to select rank. Now we could also create more. We could create more scoreboards and select different scoreboards. Just like in the chest, we could have di in those different rows, we could select what row and we could, you know, add more oak to it or add more iron to it. It works the exact same way, just like adding items to a chest. Now, let's actually do this. So there we go. One. So now we have one in our um, thing over there. But we can also, one thing that many people don't realize is that you could add completely arbitrary things. Let's, um, I don't know notch here we go rank let's do you know 29 there we go now notch has 29 in the server you know that's that's an interesting way of of adding a a minecraft admin into um into your game he totally joined that's completely legitimate it's notch approved <laughs> you can i guess you could try pranking your friends with that tell me how that goes in the comments down below if you actually manage to do that successfully most likely not but if you do that would be very funny and a, a probably really rude to your friend uh, but anyway so now we have you know that one and we could do it like another one i don't know let's just let's just do dinner bone um oops i forgot i need to add and then dinner bone one there we go oops uh rank one or five there so now we have dinner bone over there with um five and for some reason they have different spaces i'm not entirely sure why that is the case um, but either way yeah as you can see now we have several different numbers to work with uh so let's actually use that now we can list and we can list all of the scoreboards for a player so server if his server rank is one and obviously this is the string this is what the computer sees that's why it's in the parentheses um, but this is what we see whenever we're looking at so this is showing the tracked objectives or objective for mr jcraft now we can also do the same thing for things that you know don't exist such as notch over here so notch same thing now if we added you know more objectives they would be listed just like that there'd just be one after another so let's actually, now let's look at some other stuff. I believe we do type list. There we go. So it's showing three tracked players on the scoreboard, which would be Mr. J. Craft, Notch, and Dinnerbone. So using this, obviously we can, we can see all the players that are listed. Now we could do, I think operations. Let me see what operations is real quick. I for, I didn't forget, but I just want to make sure. Okay, yeah, that is, um, I want to explain that last because that's, it's a little weird. So there we go. Random and let's do Mr. J Craft um, rank. Now min to max. So basically random, we can summon in, well I say summon, but basically we can set ours to a completely random number. Now right now it is one. So we can basically make it to be completely, completely random between the max and the minimum by using the star. And basically if we do that, I believe we do that, let me see. Nope. Okay, whatever. We'll just do negative. We can do negative numbers, I'm pretty sure. Let's try this. Negative 100 to 100. Yeah, there we go. So we can have negative numbers and just have it completely random and just keep clicking this. You know, there's negative 20. There, negative 20, um, 54, negative 33. Here we go. Do that again. Negative 88, a negative 33, uh, 89. Yeah, as you can see, we can just um, set this to whatever we want. So we can set the minimum value and the maximum value, and it'll go completely random between those two. So we can go, you know, 0 to 10. There we go. So now it's 7. Now it's 0. Now it's 10. Now it's 1, 0, five, wait, 8, 0, 9, 3, 
yeah, completely random. And that is actually, that can be really very, very useful if you ever need something to be random. And you can set up commands to react whenever it is a random, whenever it is a random number. Like if it's between zero and 10, we can have commands that will execute at any time that you have zero and then one and then two, three, all the way up to 10. And it will just bounce in between and you can basically create random generators. So you can generate like a random mine for a, uh, like a mine server. And oh my goodness gracious, that sheep right there nearly decapitated itself. I had no idea sheep could like bend their head down so far. Their shoulders don't move at all. Any anyway, that I'm sorry. I got I'm getting a little distracted. Uh, that I I'm actually that is okay. I had no idea sheep could like nearly decapitate their heads trying to eat grass. I mean, whenever I'm eating, I bring my food to. Well, I guess the sheep can't really do that, but I mean, at least bend your shoulders over. I mean. Ugh. That's not healthy at all. Any, okay, let's get back to what I was doing. So then remove, here we go, remove. We can remove Mr. Jcraft from, you know, rank. And then there, there we go. Oops. And we can remove uh, whatever number. So we had three, now it's at two, now it's at one. There we go. So remove is basically the same thing. It's the opposite of add, it's just subtraction. Then reset would be, um, oops, I accidentally did remove. There we go, reset. Mr. Jcraft, there we go. It resets um, it from, you could reset it from all or you can do it for one. So obviously now we have it uh, reset Mr. Jcraft and it removes you from the scoreboard because now it completely reset you. So whenever you reset, it gives you com like no number at all. You're not even on the list anymore, uh, which is basically like in the chest, like removing all of the items. You don't even have it's, fur it's actually further than removing all the items. It's like deleting the chest entirely. You don't even have anywhere to put the numbers. You just, it completely removes it. Um, so you don't, um, you're not showing up in the list anymore. Obviously, you're still technically zero, but it's just a way of removing you from the from the display. It's, hopefully that makes sense. So um, let's actually test some more stuff out. So we have um, set, which is different than add. Now, if we go Mr. J set Mr. Jcraft, you know, rank, if we set it to 10, you know, there we go, it's 10. It's set to 10. If we do it again and we keep doing it, oh, it's always going to be 10. Now, let's say if we do add, add Mr. Jcraft, you know, rank um, 10, it's, you know, there's 20. Now it's 30, 40, 50. It's always adding more. It's not setting it to a number. Now, test is pretty much your bread and butter. So what you can do with that is you can test to see if... Um, Mr. Jcraft or whatever is in a certain range. So you can test from infinity to infinity and basically it's gonna be in there. Now, let's actually use a command block for this so we can have a um, the output be properly correct. And while we're at it, I don't know why you wouldn't know how to give yourself a command block, but if you don't, just in case, because there are some people who don't. So it's slash give space name or at s space command underscore block and there you go um sorry that sounded a little bit sarcastic but um yeah if you did if you did actually need to know there you go uh, most likely you didn't but there yeah i've been i had no idea how many people you know didn't know like basic commands until um recently or at least i think they're basic i don't know i might be biased here we go actually yeah i am definitely biased what am i saying okay here we go now let's actually set this up with a you know comparator and uh let Let's get the redstone lamp. There we go. And get a repeating thing going on. Okay. So let's actually set this up so we have our our test. So the first one obviously is men and the second is uh, max. And let's actually here. Here's another one for you. Uh, so if you do game rule um, show command block. I mean, yeah, wait, no. Uh, sorry, command, command block output. Uh, we can set that to be false and there we go. Now we can actually type in chat and it's not spamming us with the results. Um, that's what this is for. This is going to test to see if it's true or false. At the moment, we have 50. So if we actually go in here, right now it's going between infinity and infinity. That's what these mean. Is It's basically just a placeholder. It doesn't mean infinity. It's basically just a placeholder for the thing to know, okay, go to our, our smallest number and go to our biggest number we can use. And that is actually what um, this is here. Negative 
really big number to positive really big number. Since I don't know what that number is at the moment. I'm too lazy to count. I think it's 2 billion. I'm not entirely sure. Um, either way, we're going to continue on. So now we have 50. Um, so we can actually test um, test to see this. So now we can go between, let's say, let's say we, we can go to 50 to 50. So as you can see here, it's still positive because we are in that range, even if it's just a one block number range. Now, if we go to 51 to 51, it won't work anymore. It's going, it's going to turn off. We can go that to all the way up to max. Still won't work. Or let's say 100 if you don't believe me. It still won't work. But if we go down and we set this to 50, it's going to work now. Or we could do the same thing. We could do, but if we do the exact same thing but in the opposite direction, let's go from 10 to 49. It still won't work because it's not to that 50 mark. But if we, the second we set it to 50, it's going to work. Um, the reason why this can be useful is um, you can set it up to be, let's say, if you're, if you, let's say, if you have a rank system in your server and they're doing a kit PvP or they're doing some sort of PvP or dungeon kind of setup, right? And certain dungeons are for certain level players. Obviously, in some situations, you don't want a high ranking player going into a lower ranking dungeon and wiping everything out for no reason. You know, they are just able to one hit every creature and they're just destroying everything. And anyone who's in that level won't be able to get any experience and won't be able to rank up or get, you know, get the items, whatever, however you're doing the rank up system. In that case, you can make it where, let's say you could have it where, okay, let's say rank 10 um, between, between rank you, could, oh, actually, yeah, this would completely work. You could say between rank 10 and rank 15, you're allowed to go into that, into that dungeon, right? Or between, yeah, let, let's do that. Between, between rank 10 and rank 15, you're allowed to go into dungeon, but anything above, you're not allowed to go in because you're too powerful. Anything below, you're not allowed to go in because you're not well enough equipped, or you could really, you could go all the way down and say from zero to 15. So let's say if you're rank zero, you can still go in. You might get slaughtered and murdered and then buried while you're there. Um, however, you can definitely still enter and you know, all the way up to 15. And if you're level 16, oh, you're not allowed to go in. You're, you're too powerful. Same. You can do that for any, for any rank you, you really want to do, you know, you could do that course you wouldn't want a bunch of low ranking people and like a larger one so let's say you know you have you have rank 50 or something ridiculous and you have like rank 60 you know between rank 50 to rank 60 oh yeah they can go in but anyone below anyone over not allowed and you know pretty simple idea you can also do it with money as well so you can make it where if they have let's say if the items worth 120 dollars or whatever 120 you can do 120 to let's say you know infinity there we go so between 120 and all the way up to the max price that you can have in the game there you go so then okay now you're allowed to buy the item so now you're allowed to buy it there you go now you can buy it it's pretty simple um kind of thing test is as i said pretty much your bread and butter and that's going to give you a lot of opportunity to change and do a lot of stuff. Now, the next part, which uh, pretty much will be the last part that we're going to be going over, uh, that is going to be operation. Um, like the video game, not the, that's not a video, like the board game, it can be a little bit difficult. Well, the board game isn't that difficult. It's just difficult if you're tired or if you've been... But this right here um, can be very useful as well. So we have um, times equal. So what that can do is let's say, okay, notch. Here we go. So we have notch and, okay, let's actually, oh, good, we didn't do that. So notch is at 29. Uh, let's actually set the numbers to something that we can actually tell what it is. Because, okay, let's do uh, set Mr. Jcraft to um, two. Let's set notch to, um, yeah, let's set notch to, to six. Um, and it, it didn't didn't work because I forgot to type in you know which scoreboard we're using which um, is is rank so um, don't forget to type that in okay there we go so now we have apparently apparently I put it in backwards there we go okay that took long enough so we have Mr Jcraft two notch is six obviously he's still the highest rank 
not for long. But here we go. So we have operation, and we're going to do Mr. J Craft rank, and then we're going to do multiply equal. And then we're going to set it to notch uh, rank. There we go. Now what that's going to do, as you can see, I had two, notch had six. What that means is that we had notch, and now notch is set up to be, he was six. He stayed the same. However, it multiplied Notch's number to ours. So 2 times 6 is 12. So what this means is that all of these are pretty much exactly what you think. This is percent equal, which is... I'm actually still not entirely sure what this necessarily does, because the last time I tried, it didn't work very well. I'm not 100% sure, but I know it is an operation like that, so that now it's 0. Yeah, most of the time it just sets itself to zero because it's like a, I think it's a percentage of it. However, it's if it's more, it won't work. Maybe uh, yeah, it's it's a little weird. Obviously, plus equals is adding it to it. Minus equals is yeah subtracting. The divide sign equal dividing. And it's always dividing by that number. Obviously, so it'll be it'll add. Notch's number to ours or whatever number to ours it, or subtract that number to ours because ours comes first um, Then greater uh, the less than let's actually test that out real quick. Um, I forgot it, what that does exactly um, But let's actually make sure that we got this right um, Okay, set rank for Mr. Craft B zero and let's actually oh, okay. Yeah, I remember what that does I don't know why I didn't, but there we go. It will set ours to be equal to whatever if we reach, if ours is greater than or less than. So let's say, let's say if we're doing a timer system, this is where I think it would be useful. And let's say um, we changed Notch's name to be an, you know, hour. So, and you know, an hour um, long, if, Yeah, that is so, so confusing. That is very confusing. Yeah, that is that's very odd. Okay, yeah, that is very, very odd. I know it's useful, but pretty much if it's above, yeah, let's just forget the timer thing. I could, I think it could be useful for that, but I'm really confused all of a sudden. I don't know. Anyway, so basically if it's less than, if, if the, if your operation is true, if it's less than or if it's greater than, it will set the number to be equal to um, whatever it is. So notch was six, ours was zero. And I uh, tested with this one basically saying that notch, if notch is greater than Mr. J craft, which obviously it is. But anyway, if notch is greater than Mr. J craft, then it will set my rank to be equal to his. Now, obviously that can be useful, but it, it's a little weird and I'm not entirely sure 100% how that works or what it would be useful for. I know it could definitely can be useful, but since you know how it works, um, whenever you need it, you're going to know you are you need it. I just can't think of an example right now. Um, obviously, if you need it, you're probably going to know. So here we go. So dinner bone. Um, okay, yeah, see this one right here? Basically, Whenever you set them um, where there is a greater than, then a less than, it's just going to switch the numbers around. So let's say you want to change, you want to switch the numbers around. You're, you trade the numbers basically. So if, so right now, dinner bone is at six, Mr. J Craft is at five, and there we go. It switches between the two. Um, but then we can also set something equal. Um, so let's actually set, you know, Mr. J Craft to be you know, rank zero. There we go. Now it's at zero. Now if we do an operation of equal to, to let's say dinner bone, let's just do, there we go. We set, oops, I messed that up. There we go. Equal to dinner bone, um, have that at rank. There we go. Now minus five and it's just that easy. Uh, so those are pretty straightforward, but they can be weird to actually figure out how to use like the greater than or less than one. You know, when do you need to set something equal to something else? Now, the reason why that can be useful is because then you can have like hidden variables. What I mean by that is you can have a scoreboard just for numbers that you want to keep, you know, in mind. 
So I'm going to show you that technique actually. So we have scoreboard objectives and this is why I call it a VAR. So there we dummy and our display would be VAR, but we're not going to display it because there's no point in display, displaying it. So if we do player, now let's actually do players add um, one, I guess, one, one. Oh, we can't do that. We can add a um, one. I mean, add a var um, one. And we can do b two, c three. Obviously, you can name this whatever you want. And, you know, d four or whatever. You can set those to be whatever you want. And then obviously the nice thing with these commands is let's say if we do an operation and we want something to be done like this. So we have multiply, instead of saying multiply it by a number, we can just say multiply by whatever variable that you have or by um, what, it, what is set there. And obviously those can change. You can set operations to A, B and C and D and whatnot. So let's actually do that, you know, minus equals, you know, we can do A. I mean, a nah, var, there we go, a var, and we can do that again. And as you can see, it's subtracting by one every time. And you could see where this could be useful because let's say, I can't really think of an exact example at the moment. I know there's some things, it's just I'm not thinking straight at the moment because it would take me a second to think of something. And at the moment, I don't really have a lot of time because, you know, obviously we're in, we're in the middle of a you know, YouTube video. I don't have time to think of good examples of, you know, when you need to set something to be equal to something um, if, you're, if it's greater than or less than the number. There's not really a ton of really good uses I can think for that because most of the time you can just use test for. Um, but I think there are probably some uses. Let's say if you're doing something that you want, you want the thing to work anywhere in the world. That might be one of those times because obviously you can do the test for command, but then um, how like that, then you have to have a chain command block go off of the test for, which could be an issue. So if you did it this way, it's test, it could test for something and it could set, set the number of someone's, you know, rank or variable or whatever it is. And it can be set to anything that you want it to be. So in that case, I could see it being useful for that kind of stuff. But at the moment, I can't really think of any like real concrete examples. It, it definitely can be useful, but you're just gonna have to keep it in mind. And whenever you uh, figure out a use for it, definitely then you can use it. And this is a really big ravine. It's like ginormous. This is not even the biggest one I found. I found a glitched seed a while back. Anyway, and that's, that's completely off the topic, but that is perfectly fine. Recap everything that we've already gone over. Basically, the scoreboards were able to use it as a separate inventory for information so that we know something with the commands. So the commands know whether or not to react in a certain way. Like if you go into a dungeon, you could make it where it will react more harshly to someone who's a higher rank and summon in more dangerous creatures or more creatures. So in that case, it's like a chest. That is a good way of thinking of it. It's like a chest for each individual player. You're able to, you know, give information to every single player and be able to react off the information, you know, just like, you know, let's like, as I said, like a chest, it's storing information, but unlike items, you can't really have, you know, tons of different things. It's only able to store, you know, one number per, per thing, if that makes sense. So obviously for our, you know, on our rank thing that we have over there, obviously I can't have two and three. I can't have two and five or five and seven or five and one. I can have seven, eight, nine, 105. I can have that, or I could have, you know, the rank or the server thing over there. That could be two. Then I can also have in the variable or a completely different scoreboard. I can have a different scoreboard be five, but I can't have server be five and two. It can basically only hold one number. Like 105 is one number. It's 105. It's a large number, but it's just one number. So it's unlike a chest in that way that it's only able to hold one number. So it's more like a chest slot in that manner. So each chest slot is, you know, a different, 
is a different score scoreboard entirely. So like this is one scoreboard and you know the next one would be another scoreboard with whatever numbers. So you can sort of imagine it in that way. So you can sort of, if you're trying to imagine how the command block will work, you can sort of imagine it as, you know, numbers being, you know, going up and down a chest, if that helps you. Now, obviously, it may help you. It may not help you. I just wanted to put that out there just in case if you needed a way of visualizing how the computer sort of sees the numbers going by. So if a serv if you know a command block was to uh, test to see, you know, test to see if Mr. Jcraft is between zero and ten, it would be like, okay, let's see, Mr. Jcraft. Let's let's look in our little book that we've got going on our scoreboard. Okay, let's see, uh, it's two. Is that between zero and ten? Yes. Okay, output that as true, and stamps the number down. There we go. Mr. Jcraft has two, and that's how the command like literally perceives it. It goes step by step seeing whether or not it's true or false. And obviously if you get enough of those inputs, you can test to see if, you know, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, um, very specific numbers, but then you need to have every single time it has to do it separately. So if you're doing a scoreboard, you can't test to see if I have one or five in the exact same command. You can test to see if I have a number between one and five. So you can test to see, oh, is Mr. Jaircraft between one and five? Yeah, I'm two, that's between one and five. That's right after one, in fact. So, you know, the computer's testing one, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's two, good. But as I mentioned, you can't test to see in the exact same command, you can't test to see, does Mr. Jaircraft have one and five? You can't test two completely separate numbers and skip the middle. I'm in the middle between one and five, and you can't just skip those numbers and only test one. Or let's say you can test, you know, one, two, four, and five and skip four. The only way you can do that is if you do two operations, test between one and two, then also test between three, I mean not three, four and five. So that's sort of the limitations of, you know, having scoreboards is that it has to have, it has one operation and it can't do multiple operations at the same time, which makes sense because it's command blocks. But some of you guys get a little bit confused with that kind of stuff. So I just really want to specify it's one operation. So it, it, you can test between, uh, obviously like between zero and a hundred, but you cannot, as I said, you cannot test between, let's say one and 20 and 25 to 30 or whatever, unless you have two command blocks. So just in one command block, you can just have a big range or a small range or just one number, but you can't have like a separate things. Hopefully that makes sense. It should make sense, but if it doesn't, and most of some of you are probably confused, I'm not sure what to do for you at the moment. You just have to comment, hope that I comment back or someone else does. Um, but either way, I hope you're doing you know quite great. If you enjoyed the video, if you want to see some more videos like this, definitely comment down below because I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing too many more videos about command blocks. But I'm planning on doing some you know uh, really really cool stuff in the future, especially um, one for a build. It's definitely some Minecraft builds for sure. Possibly some videos are a bit more commentary based and uh, hopefully a bit more easy to do because time lapse videos are very difficult, as you might imagine. By the way. Um, yeah, do all the normal YouTube stuff, you know, like, comment, share, um, definitely share the video with anyone that you think would, um, find this information useful. Uh, anyway, have a great, wonderful, sublime day and God bless.